a lot of people don't know, I'm sure of our listeners, your whole whole story, but it started a few years ago where you trained your pug to do the Hitler salute as a joke. Can you yeah. walk us? I, I imagine there's hours you can go into, but can you give us a, a version of that? I'll try, I'll try and give like this short postage stamp version, but it's like uh, my girlfriend, it was my girlfriend's pug. She's my wife now, but my girlfriend at the time was always going on about how cute he was. Take, she was. take as much time as you need. Sorry to interject. If you want to lay out as much as you want, it's a long show and it's a funny story. Oh, no, that's cool. And, uh, well, basically, she would even like shove the pug in my face going, look at his little face. Look how cute he is. And I'm like, fuck off. Like, I'm a <laughs> fucking dog. And then one day I was like giving him a treat. And he lifted his paw because he gives you a paw whenever he does it. And I went, ah, that kind of looks like a little salute. And then a, <laughs> a, a, a light bulb appeared above my head. And I just thought, do you know, do you know what would be really fucking funny? <laughs> and so, yeah, the little, the little cute, lovely, the little cute, lovely animal. And then six million, you know. Oh. <laughs> like that, and I thought, that's, that's hilarious. That'll, that'll upset her to no end. But the problem is, is... Uh, he didn't do it all the time. He wasn't fully properly trained. There was sometimes he did yeah. it, sometimes he didn't do it. And I didn't want to take the dog in front of my in front of my girlfriend and then try and get him to do it. And he doesn't do it. And it's like Daisy work just completely ruined, right? So I decided <laughs> to film all the times he actually did do it. And then I made it into a video. I uploaded it on YouTube with like no intention of it going anywhere. I even gave it like a stupid title. I only had eight subscribers. <laughs> they were all friends of mine. They were all people I knew. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought, ah, there's no chance anyone's going to find this. <laughs> so, but then it uh, ended up, the, the plan was me and my girlfriend would like have little YouTube nights. We would put YouTube on the TV in the living room and then we would watch videos. And I was going to totally blindside her by going, oh, I know this. I know this really funny video. Just you sit there. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put it on. And then I was going to get my phone out and like film a reaction. But before we even get a chance to do that, I went to a fan fest in Iceland, which is like, Eve, Eve online the online space spreadsheets mm. game i was i was very yeah. very into that game back yeah. then so i went to iceland and while i was on the plane going to iceland someone found the video somehow still don't know how and then they posted it to reddit and it made it to the front page of reddit <laughs> right i didn't know so i've landed in a foreign country uh, so my phone is not not got signal i'm not mm -hmm. getting texts or anything no notifications i'm going around reykjavik i'm meeting up with my friends over there we went to the pub i got absolutely drunk like that and then i like stumbled back to my hotel room not realizing mm -hmm. that back home my fucking life has been burned down <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm running around trying to speak Icelandic and shit, man. Like, <laughs> not, not realizing that like hundreds of reporters are calling like my grandmother and shit. <laughs> that man, right? While I'm running around going, hurdy gurdy gurdy, running around fucking Iceland. <laughs> right? But then, uh, but then I get back to I get back to the hotel room. I pass out for a few hours. I wake up feeling like shit. I, I've like go to check my phone, and I'm like, oh fuck! Oh wait, the hotel Wi-Fi. Connected to the hotel Wi-Fi and my phone just blew the fuck up, man. It's like you have like <laughs> shit tons of YouTube messages. You have thirty-eight voicemails and like all that shit, man. Right, and then <laughs> and, and, like while I was just scrolling through them, I only scrolled through them for like ten seconds, and then my girlfriend called me and I says, "What the fuck's going on? What's happened?" And then she said, "Why are there reporters at the door?" <laughs> <laughs> and I just went. I don't fucking know. Is it the video? And then, yeah, I found out that the video went viral. And, oh, uh, no. This poor dog ruined your life. Nah, <laughs> yeah, yeah poor fuck dog. him. Yeah, fuck him, man. He get nothing. Every day. Day. Every I hope, I hope you just point. beat the shit out of him every day after this. <laughs> I, I do. I do. It's hard not to. There's a reason his face looks like that, you know. That's not like. a bug. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but ended up like... Uh, I just had fun in Iceland. I just thought, ah, fuck it, you know, it's done now. Uh, while I was actually, uh, Helmar Weigar was like the CEO of, like, well, he was, he stepped down, but he was the CEO of CCP Games, and it was in the middle of his, like, keynote speech, the big speech for, like, EVE Online Fan Fest, and I, I basically get an email from my job going, yeah, you're fucking fired. <laughs> so I was like, oh and I, so, like, he's giving his big speech, and I'm turning around to all my friends going, I just got fired. <laughs> <laughs> Not, man, and I'm letting them all like read the email. So I just thought, I fuck it. Kept, kept partying in Iceland. And they're all making jokes going, they're going to arrest you when you go back home. And I'm like, ah, no, they won't. 
<laughs> because it was one, it was one of those like if only you knew how bad things really were. You know? <laughs> but I ended up came home, got off the plane, came home to like reporters hanging around outside my house, they're taking pictures of me and trying to talk to me as I'm going into the house. Uh, I I then ended up speaking to the the local youths, shall we shall we say, and uh, told them that if they see any journalists in the street to ask them very nicely to leave. <laughs> <laughs> you hire polite. thugs to run off the port reporters? No, you don't hire them. It's just no. It's, it's <laughs> every, every, oh no, yeah. they work for free. <laughs> yes, yes, they do. In Scotland, the love of the game. Each, each area, you know, each housing estate or project or whatever you want to call it in America has its own street gang known as the Young mm. Team, right? And basically, if you they do, they have this whole thing where they don't like you if you're not from there. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'm familiar with not, that. They're they're not from here. <laughs> so can I still ask them ask them nicely to leave. And so for a few days there was there was no reporters, no journalists, no nothing. Mm. Right. But then ended up uh, we get a knock at the door, and I've I've just had three bongs yeah. <laughs> when we get this knock at the door. And then I open it and it's the CID, like a uh, criminal investigation. Department. Oh, yeah. you were those, looking the best that day. And and those were the two people that came to <laughs> the door. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> That's me being arrested. I look like a fucking hobo, man. <laughs> and that was, that was the thing that was in the papers. It's like, like no one even knows the crime, but everyone's looking at that picture just going, he deserves it. He deserves it. <laughs> fucking look, look at him. You look like that's the first time you've seen light. In the day. <laughs> you look like a newborn kitten. <laughs> well, I was recently unemployed, but... but uh, <laughs> like you just... Like they're taking you out of like a, a prisoner of war camp. What had you been up to the, the, in the weeks prior to this? Because you look good today. No, nothing. I got fired. <laughs> like I got fired. <laughs> I was sitting in the house smoking weed and doing nothing. All right, <laughs> all right. So, I can get on board with that. Yeah, hence the like unkempt beard and fucking just shit hair and everything. And also, I'm high as fuck. That's why my eyes look like tiny vaginas. <laughs> like it's, like, it's quite bad. But ended up like uh, there was no reporters in the street. But the reason. But as you can see from that picture, suddenly there was reporters in the street. Yeah. And uh, my neighbors told me that they arrived with the cops. Yeah, of course. They came yeah. they came like with the police now. They knew about your gang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. That was uh, it. But the, yeah. but the but the thing is, whenever the police communicate with the press, they're not allowed to tell the press shit like that. Mm. Oh, this is the date and time we're gonna have Yeah, someone slipped a hundred bucks. Blah, blah. Yeah. No, well, yeah. What happened was basically the cops broke the law. They're supposed to have a record of every communication they make with journalists. There's no record. Like, my lawyer tried to get it, and they were like, no such thing exists. And it's like, oh, well, guess guess the journalists are fucking psychic then, you know? But mm. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. And I, I got arrested, and because of the nature of the crime, so it was a hate crime, uh, I got ridiculous. Uh, you Sometimes you get taken down to the station, they book you and go, all right, fuck off. You'll, you'll get your court date in the mail. Right, yeah. but I got kept in because mine's was classed as a very serious offence. So I'm yeah. sitting in sitting in cell, and I'm just like, all right, okay, I guess I'm having a fucking sleepover <laughs> and in jail tonight. And then, like in the middle of the night, I can hear just screaming coming down the hall, just screaming, right? And then I, I look out through the little porthole, and basically, the cops have got this guy in like the Superman carry, you know how where they've got him mm -hmm. in a full body harness, and they're just yep. carrying him like a big plank of wood down the hall. They throw him in the room and I can hear them like kneeling on his back to undo the restraints and then they just back out the room and slam the door. And this guy's screaming the fucking place down, punching walls, kicking the door. This is at like three, four in the morning when I'm trying to sleep. And I'm sitting there, I'm sitting punching the wall and shouting back, going, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, <laughs> like screaming at him. And he's shouting shit out, going, I've ruined my life, I've ruined my life, and everything. And then, oh, no. And then, <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Me I, too! I, I, <laughs> let's sleep on it! That was interesting. <laughs> but, uh, but ended up, like, the next morning we're getting, like, taken out to go to the courthouse, and so we're all getting, like, you know, shackled up and everything to get loaded onto the vans. And the porter, who's the guy that looks after the prisoners, he was very nice. He was a nice guy. And I said to him, going, who was that absolute roaster that you put into the cell next to me last night, man? He kept me awake all night. And the guy just goes, oh, yeah, he murdered his friend. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what did he do to his friend? Murdered his friend. Like, murdered. Murdered. Uh, yeah, killed him. And, and I was like, okay, I understand why he's upset, you know, but... Yeah. You know, man, all right, he well, did ruin his, his own life. life, but what about his friend's life? Just 
pretty much over. Well, he's a murderer. Yeah. They're More or less. Selfish. Never, yeah. never mind that. What about my sleep? Fuck them. I can't sleep. <laughs> that is the, the French guard. You're never getting that sleep back, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. I mean, so, Facts. Facts. what was uh, what was the job that fired you instantly upon mm. learning that you'd taught your dog a, a salute? It was two. One wasn't really a firing. Like one of them was just a call center. Like it was like repairing. See how the little PDAs you use whenever you make a card transaction. It was like repairing them. So mm-hmm. you had people calling you that couldn't speak English, and you were having to guide them through a complicated process <laughs> of like how to reset their pin machine and everything. So that was that was a fucking nightmare. And the other one was security, and that wasn't so much a firing. I just never got shifts. I think they yeah. just kind of went. Ah, if we ignore them, we'll go away. Yep, and everyone was kind of like, "But I work for you." <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you do, and as soon as you like, think so, huh? you in. <laughs> just I, I think I said, "Am I am I not getting any shifts this week?" And I never got a text back, and I was kind of oh. like, "And it's not like a security boss to turn down someone that wants to do shifts." So I kind of <laughs> I kind of just went, "All right, okay, that, that's that then." But like, uh, ah. ended up as I was getting like taken out the cell, I'm getting handcuffed up, and I'm, as I'm getting loaded into the van, the van's got like lots of little pods mm. in it for like each prisoner. As I'm walking by one of the windows, I see a friend of mine, <laughs> like that. But he's he's one of these friends where you only get to ever hang out with him for about two or three months at a time, because then mm. he's then he's back in <laughs> for, like a, <laughs> for like a while. So. Uh, Ended up, I was like, "Oh fuck, how you doing? You know, fancy meeting you here, like type of thing." <laughs> and everyone, we were sitting there, and we're like shouting through the little boxes at each other, like to try and talk to each other. And mm-hmm. he sort of says, "Allegedly, I, uh, I uh, opened someone's face up with a meat cleaver. He basically slashed someone down the face, which is a, a very common thing in Scotland. Extremely common. Of course. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. So That's you're nice. in prison. You found out your new neighbor is a murderer. Yes. What happens next? Well, I got taken to court uh, the next day, and then that's when you just get put in like the big communal room with like all the other prisoners and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. uh, while we're while we're sitting there chatting, it ends up getting onto the oh, what are you in for? Like fucking <laughs> finger, and I'm like, and I knew it was coming. And I'm like, all right, here we go, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> <laughs> like, but uh, one guy got caught with like two hundred Valium pills. One guy got caught mm. growing weed in his house. Uh, one guy was just like violated his parole conditions blah 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 but then uh i guess to my friend who goes allegedly i opened someone's face with a meat cleaver and then it gets to me and i just start laughing and i'm like Haha, well uh i made a meme of uh, <laughs> I have my girlfriend's pug nazi saluting for a joke and like three of the guys in there went that was you <laughs> 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 I thought I knew your face. And I was like, oh, hi, yeah. That was me. But then my friend like leans over and whispers to me, going, See when you go in, don't tell people that because you will get battered. Well, <laughs> man, like, people, yeah, see, because it's not violent and it's something dumb that I'm in for, like they would just people would just kick the shit out of me. And of them. That but when sucks. <laughs> but it's then so it got, not because they're anti Nazi, it's because they're anti pussy crimes. Oh no! I can assure you that some some certain parts of Scottish prisons are very pro-Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seems to be a common prison thing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> everywhere. But there was a guy like sitting on the floor, and he looked about like eighteen, nineteen, or something like that. And like he's sitting, sort of curled up. This is obviously a whole new experience for him. I've been arrested before, like a bunch of times. It's always just been for fighting. Mm-hmm. I was outside a bar. I said something or someone said something, we threw punches, the police came, like basic stuff, nothing bad, you know, like split head, bust nose, bust lip, like basic shit like that. that those are the mm-hmm. ones where you don't even get charged. They just keep you until you sober up and then the next morning open the doors and go, right, fuck off. Because <laughs> in, in Scotland, there is not enough time on earth <laughs> to prosecute <laughs> all of the fights. <laughs> there's, there's just, the drunken fights. <laughs> the, dr- the drunken fights, yeah. There's just there's not enough time. Basically, is there any other kind? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the police are leaving pressure. Both guys like, don't press charges, don't press charges. The other guy's not pressing charges. They're leaving lie <laughs> and say, the other guy's not pressing charges. Cool people don't there. press charges. Yeah. What's your plan? <laughs> they, just want, they just want you to leave. They just want you to get out. But this, this guy was sitting there and we were uh, and he turned around and says see if, see if it's your first offence 
like what what happens and then all these other like you know seasoned criminals were going if it's your first offense you'll get admonished admonished basically means <clears throat> the judge just chews you the fuck out and mm -hmm. he might give you a warning basically saying if you appear in front of me again blah 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 mm -hmm. and all that but then uh, no charges no nothing it still gets marked on your little record but you don't have mm -hmm. a criminal record mm -hmm. uh, and we, and that's then nice. that's when that's when someone went Oh well, it depends. What did you do? <laughs> and then he, he turns around and says, "I got caught with a kilo of cocaine," and Ooh. fucking the whole room just erupted in laughter. And it, I felt so bad because even I was doing it. The whole room was looking at this kid, <laughs> going, "No, you're fucked. You're absolutely <laughs> fucked. You're getting at least five, at least five. <laughs> and you just saw the color just drain from his face as he like he was cross-legged on the floor, just staring at the ground. And then oh. everyone sort of realized that we've just told this guy his life's over or some shit. And then, and then people start going. Oh well, maybe maybe not. If you've got a good lawyer, you know. <laughs> you never know, though. What like, guys, you know, uh, maybe judge, a, yeah. maybe a judge, a drunk barrister, who knows? <laughs> but I never checked up on him. I never got his name. But yeah, he for for a kilo of cocaine, yeah, he he got time. Oh he yeah, of course, time. dude. That was so scary because like we've all watched television, we've all watched movies, and that's as close as ninety nine point nine percent of us ever come to the real deal legal system. And maybe you see some like medieval movie where they're like, all right, well, off with his head. Just easy peasy. You're like, ha, we're a lot more careful these days with people's lives and even the times of their lives. We, we consider that before we just, oh, wait, no, nah, 30 years. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> Mr. Myers, you're next. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, like when I watched him specifically, I've, I've told the story a bunch of times, but when I watched that judge put that uh, drug trafficker away for like a quarter century or more, whatever it was. I was like, oh my God, this is the real courtroom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all the courtrooms I've ever been in up until today were like, there were some traffic charges yeah. present. No one in the courtroom with me there today was thinking about what they were going to do yeah. that afternoon. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> everybody there was laser focused on the proceedings. You go to traffic court, there's people fucking around back there. They're not yeah. dressed appropriately. They're, they're they're being silly. The judge might even have to, hey, 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 calm it down. Dude, it was a it was a fucking funeral in there. Everybody <laughs> was so afraid that you might like be the one that that judge like. Are you disrupting my courtroom? Who are you here to see anyway? <laughs> I, no, no. <laughs> Tell him it's the Mexican dad. <laughs> here, that Mexican fella. Well, go. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It's fucking scary. It's not that. It's not that at all. <laughs> oh, Judge Ryder. Right I mean, oh, probably... so what was the fallout after that? You know, at that point, after they released you, were were yeah, you so under the impression that it was going to fade away? No, I just I got released. But one of the things that was funny is I didn't have a lawyer at this point because I did have a lawyer years ago when I was younger and fighting all the time. But he was like in his nineties, so I didn't even I didn't even try and look him up. I just thought he's hmm. dead. <laughs> <laughs> like he's he's fucking dead. But uh, I got they went okay. Well, you've got a like state appointed lawyer, and I went and and I sat down at the in front of the glass right, and I, I shit you not, he did this to me because. One of the funniest things that is fucking pranked during this whole trial. I sat across from him and he just done. He was writing and he just done that, like put his finger up so that he could what, keep writing. Your camera had stuck. Uh, what, what did he do? I he, he done like that as if uh, okay, and just second. kept writing. So I just sat there in silence for about like 20, 30 seconds while he finished his notes, and then he slowly looks up at me and goes, "Shalom." <laughs> 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 and I, I actually jumped and froze and went oh my god and he went i'm not jewish <laughs> he went, it's okay <laughs> and i was kind of like well you know lawyer you know <laughs> but, but ended up uh, i spoke to him and we exchanged contact details i get sent back to the cell and there's this world i forget what it is but basically the judge will look through his itinerary for the day and if there's anything that's dumb on it, the judge will just say, release them and just give them their date. Just mm -hmm. let them out of the cell and give them their date because the judge wants to, he wants to be away for five, you know, golf mm -hmm. and all that. So it ends up, the guy just comes in and says, I forget the phrase, but he just went, something granted. He went, off you go. And then I was like, oh, well, Bye, bye, guys. To like guys that are about to get like 15, 20. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, bye bye. Like that. So I left. 
Uh, <laughs> and then it ended up, I get given a court date and it, the trial ended up lasting for about two years and it was about eight or nine dates during like the whole trial. <laughs> uh, that's me waving outside. Not, wa- you, waving. Can I, can I give you, can I give you a, a tip here? Low wave. Down here. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I, I know. Take Kyle's advice. This is wrong. You're looking for something... Yeah. Thank the, the, God the, the your fingers papers. are apart in that photo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Always the, like the this. Always like this. <laughs> wrist active. Get that wrist active. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Nazis very stoic wrists. You got to work on the throws and stuff like that. Oh no, the newspapers were very happy when I did that because I was like, no, I was waving. I was waving and everything, but there was footage of me like doing that with my hand as I came out and everything, but my wife thought I'd done a Nazi salute for a oh. job. <laughs> <laughs> and all that, but it uh, ended up ended up what happened. It was like eight, nine times I was in court, and I was in Jesus. there for two two years, two-year trial, so twice as long as Nuremberg. But it ended up, <laughs> <laughs> but it ended, it ended up every... Every time I ended up, obviously, I have to get arrested and I get a big boost in subs and people started watching my channel and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And uh, while I'm going to court, every time I went to court, um, I would be back in the papers again. My family would be getting harassed. You know, they would be turning up at my door, all manners of stuff and everything. And I had nothing. I could not get jobs, could not get a job anywhere, like even in security and stuff like that. Like, uh, I would go to a place and in the interview they would go, "Hey, aren't you that?" Yeah, and then I wouldn't get hired. <laughs> Some places I tried to be honest with them and went, "Yeah, just so you know, you know, there may be a little bit of press interest, you know, some <laughs> some media concern about me working here in your pawn shop." <laughs> and, <I'm> like, <laughs> And then they were kind of like, oh, you're that guy. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> like, no, nah, you're not working Actually, here. I got some old uniforms you might want to take a look at before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> some, some places, some fucking places was uh, like, I just lied. I just went, oh, yeah, I'm I'm this guy and would like a job. And I, I got recognized <laughs> by a customer on my first fucking day. Mm, and, oh, and no. then, like, the manager got called in because some little rat bitch in the staff, like, told on me. The manager came in and yeah, I was fired on my first day. Never get well, paid. Let, let me ask you this: wow. like these are all the bad things. These are people who think you are a Nazi, I guess, and and they're like, oh, we're gonna not gonna have him. We're not gonna have him here. We won't. We're gonna even let him work somewhere. Did you have any actual Nazis who were like, hey man, I got a job for you. Come on over here to the golf course. Like, 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 never. Nothing like that. <laughs> never, never had anything like that. Shit. No. No, never. That's never how you know any. they're completely out of power over there. Because 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 if there was still 